I, I don't have anything written tonight, but I want to share with you the spiritual dissonance that I'm experiencing being in this place of so much beauty and so much love, walking in and seeing the, the posters with photos of our teenagers who went on a trip um, that Avram helped lead with Sedek America. Um, Rabbi Tzedok's going to guide us in a conversation with our teens afterwards at dinner. Just being in this place of so much love, where one person expresses a need and someone else just jumps up to fill it without even, without even thinking for a moment about what you might be missing, what the cost might be to you. This place where old friends come and see each other and remember how much love and care there is in the world. Where we celebrate birthdays and we, we grieve deaths and we hold each other with love. My body is good. My soul is sad, and the struggle spirit is high. I'm thinking so much about what we witnessed and experienced from afar, most of us, this past week, about the events that unfolded after Shabbat in the West Bank, in a town called Huara, about the devastating murder that happened hours before of two brothers, a family that needs to bury two of their children at once, shot at point-blank range by a Palestinian terrorist, a Jewish family forever broken and shattered. And then how 400 Jewish settler extremists took it upon themselves to march into the town of Huara, a Palestinian town, try to burn it to the ground, how one of the ministers of Israel's government, Bitsalel Smotrich, tweeted that this town should be wiped off the face of the earth. I'm thinking about that one moment that many of us saw in some of the videos from this pogrom, state-supported violence. That video where the Palestinian town is burning and the perpetrators stop to Davin Mariv, to pray the evening prayer, the words that we say here and we'll say in just a few moments. And I know that when many people saw that video and saw the images, how could religious Jews behave like this? They said, this is not Judaism. This is not who we are. And I immediately remembered what happened when the previous administration here started separating kids from their parents and locking them up and how many people took to the streets with signs that said, this is not who we are, this is not America, but we were wrong because this is America, and this is who we are. And I had the most horrifying thought as my Jewish heart broke last Sunday watching these images. And that thought was, what if that is what Judaism is, and this isn't? What if all that violence and all that cruelty and all that racism what if that's what this is? And our care for refugees and love for each other and beautiful music and soul is some kind of modern liberal reinvention of something. A thought that I have to admit I've had before in my life. But then the rest of the week unfolded. Another sweet boy was shot to death the next day. A Columbia graduate could have been my kid. He went to Israel to celebrate a friend's wedding, was murdered, and the protests, and the protests. And hundreds of thousands of Israeli Jews took to the streets, and in Tel Aviv, Jews and Palestinians together took to the streets and said, there is a different way to live, and we know this to be true. And when the minister in charge of security, Itamar Ben Gvir, pointed to the TV monitors and told the police that they had to go in and with force break up those protests. They did go in and they went in with stun grenades, a massive police deployment against those Jews in the street peacefully protesting. And people were injured, a guy lost his ear, blood, tears everywhere. Do you know what the people were chanting? Efo ha'item behu'ara. Where were you in Hu'ara? 
you, this police force, you, the law enforcement, who has the ability to break up a peaceful protest, where were you during the pogrom? Efo ha'item bechu'ara. And as I thought about the Torah that I wanted to bring tonight to this community, I thought I need to bring the Torah that came from the streets in Israel, the Torah that came from our friends and our family that are fighting for dear life over there and who are trying to hold their government accountable for terrible extremes that many people are now enacting against our neighbors and now against us too. Efo ha'item behu'ara. This is the modern call that was sounded in Gan Eden, in the Garden of Eden, lifetimes ago. Ayeka, where are you? Where were you? Why did the state not step in to protect those Palestinians who had nothing to do with the shooting death of the two brothers? Why didn't you step in? Where were you? There's a new voice that's rising up from the streets today, a voice of accountability, a voice demanding that we see each other and we see our neighbors as siblings. Just this morning in Israel, a group of about 500 protesters, many of them friends and friends of friends, led by Omdim Biachad, some of the folks who were here in our community just a few weeks ago, got on buses and went to Huara, where within hours after the pogrom, over a million shekels were raised to try to help rebuild that town. 500 Israeli Jews and Palestinian citizens of Israel went to that town to try to show solidarity and love to try to help rebuild, but they were stopped by the army. And they were told they weren't allowed to go there because the army had the ability to stop people from going into that town when it wanted to. And there they chanted, Kisherotzim yicholim. Kisherotzim yicholim. When they want to, they can. I just want to invite us now to think about that as the Torah of our time. These two pieces, these two sacred texts that emerged from the street. Efo aitem b'huara. You're here now, but where were you when a Palestinian town was being decimated? And kisherotzim yicholim. When they want to, they can. When we want to, we can. I reached out to Avram Berg, who's a friend of mine, introduced by Daniel Sokach years ago. He's a former speaker of the Knesset. A man in his 70s who was part of that group of 500. And I reached out to him because I saw a video of him being confronted by these young 18, 19-year-old kids who were sent out there to stop these buses of Jews coming to show love and Palestinians coming to show solidarity. And these guys get up into Avram's face and they shove him to the ground. This man who helped build the state of Israel, this man without whose voice and whose power, these young kids wouldn't even have a state and now tossed to the side and thrown to the ground. Kishirotzim yicholim. Efo ha'inu behu'ara. Where were we? Where are we? If we want to, we can. And so at the end of a week in which my Jewish heart has broken again and again, I want to invite us to the Torah of the streets. When we want to, we can. And that Judaism that we saw on display in those horrible videos, that Judaism is Judaism. It's real. It's legitimate. It's part of our tradition. We can't deny it. I can point to you to a thousand places in our sacred literature where it appeared before and it will appear again. But this too is legitimate Judaism. And this Judaism is a Judaism of love and justice, of radical welcoming, of equity and equality. A Judaism that responds to the question by saying we were right there. We were right there with our broken hearts and with our loudest voices protesting against the cruelties and the injustices and we will again. When we want to, we can. And so if you want to see a manifestation of a different kind of Judaism in this world, then we can and we must. Our siblings are crying out for our partnership and our solidarity and our love 
and the strength of our Jewish voices and Jewish hearts right beside theirs. And I know that we will answer in every way that we possibly can. I wish you all Shabbat Shalom.